are Tools in the Shed, powered by Cars Guide, ready to rip into the car stuff that has caught our eye this week. I'm James, and with me are Mal, who will talk about a wild American horse that's more pony-sized, um, and Matt, otherwise known as Mr. Pritchard, who has a car-related movie preview for us. I do. Uh, and we'll check in with our favourite special substances enthusiast in this week's Musquatch. So stay with us. But first, <laughs> Mal, you want to talk about a particular vehicle with a fantastic backstory. It's been away for a while, but looks like it's coming back. Yes, and I loved your reference uh, before about a horse, pony, etc. Hmm. But this is a horse slash pony, but it's not a Mustang. It is a Ford, though. Yeah. So earlier this week, uh, images leaked of the upcoming Baby Bronco, as we uh, the working title, I think it's going under. Anyway, it was at a dealer uh, event in Las Vegas where someone took a photo of a PowerPoint presentation, as often happens these days. Thank you very much. Uh, so, first sighting of the Baby Bronco, not the big Bronco, the four-wheel drive uh, Wrangler rival. We've been dying to see out of Ford US, uh, returning the the nameplate to the the classic. Uh, short wheelbase. Well, one of the all time great names, I reckon, for a yeah. car, Bronco. And if it's mm, going to be a Bronco. truck, you want it to feel a bit tough and yeah. kind of outdoorsy and all that stuff. Great. Yeah. Though. Anyway, that's still to come. That yeah. will be Ranger based. We know that. Still to oh. come. Won't be too far off, hopefully, but uh, it's been earmarked for the 2020 model year, so not too far off. But anyway, this car we've seen this week is actually, uh, who knows what they're actually going to call it. But anyway, it's a four or five door SUV based on the Focus platform. So it's more wow. of a, uh, a mid-size SUV yep. um, with sort of off-roady vibe to it. A bit yeah. like Jeep's Renegade. However, being Focus-based, it's likely to be uh, closer in size to the Cherokee. So probably a pretty close rival for the Cherokee Trailhawk, um, which is the most off-road capable uh, Cherokee. Anyway, it's got chunky tyres. It uh, looks great. Yep. Uh, it does. It, it looks really cool. Yeah. Very uh, 90s looking. Nice. Um, like it's got kind of like a real sort of boxy retro kind of. Okay. Well, it's funny because it's obvious it. that Ford's been playing around with the idea of bringing the Bronco back in whatever form yeah. uh, for some time because sadly, uh, OJ Simpson, the juice, um, <laughs> didn't, didn't do the brand any favours. By having, uh, I don't know, dozens of police cars chasing him after an alleged murder. Live yeah. via helicopter. Live via helicopter, yeah. the whole bit. Mm. So all of a sudden, Bronco was just a bit on the nose. It, it went away, but they've been toying with it for some time. And there was a concept in about 2004 that people got excited about. Um, we've got a picture of it, hopefully, um, up on screen now. Mm. But it's it's got such a long history yeah, Ford, um, it's, the time's right. It feels oh, like the time's right. And, yeah. you know, values of the original ones are rocketing upwards. Right. Um, mm. OJ's moment was the very tail end of the uh, the, the last Bronco. Um, so maybe he, it was the last nail in the in the coffin, you reckon? Mm. Could have been. Thanks, yep. OJ. Yep. Um, anyway, but uh, it's on its way back. Mm. Ford has confirmed they're going to do a two-tier Bronco strategy. Makes sense to me. Mm. Um I think it looks it's great to sort of have an exciting looking Ford. It looks a bit yep. like what the uh, the Land Rover Discovery started out looking like. Those that well, those all 100 concept, concepts. It was a I forget what the prefix was, but they, Oh, that's the Defender concept. Was so it the it, Defender concept? The, the next point I was going to make is it yep. really looks like what we expect the Defender to look like. Yep. However, the Defender is going to be bigger and uh, a bit more off-road capable than it, but mm-hmm. similar sort of styling uh, thing, but yeah, definitely a a, a, a nice cool element to the Ford badge and it's got Ford proudly uh, standing the across there. the grill. It's not a Mustang, so Ford needs something beyond I, I Raptor if, and Mustang. I we'll too. see it. You know, whether it'll come to the Australian market. It's still up in the air. Mm. Uh, one Ford seems to be a thing of the past. Yep. Um, there's been plenty of SUVs, uh, US-focused SUVs we haven't seen in the past. Yep. Mm. Uh, I know that uh, our guys would love to get it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Given yeah. Ranger is our top-selling Ford, followed by Mustang, we'd need some more mainstream But wouldn't it, wouldn't it be interesting because, cars. you know, with no disrespect to any of the SUVs that are in the market, they're all none of them are uh, that distinctive. As, mm. as this car looks to be. You know, mm. it's really got a point of difference in terms of the way it looks. Cherokee has a go, and Cherokee is yep. now looking a bit better, but uh-huh. this looks, like, genuinely really cool. Really different, mm. yeah. Uh, without compromising, it seems to not compromise the practical elements. It's still a five-door with a, a boxy body, which lends itself to good interior space. Yeah. Uh, and it's due for uh, 2020, I think. Uh, no, the big Bronco is 2020. 20, this one, oh, sooner this is then. sooner. So okay. I think... 
based on the timing, we may see an official reveal at Detroit in January. Right. Uh, feels about right. I'd love to see the big Bronco then, but uh, we'll see. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, it's exciting. Uh, other points to talk about? Um, no, that's pretty much it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's move straight into a word from our valued sponsor. In 1914, two Aussie visionaries decided it was time for a new kind of car. After meeting face down on the floor of the Bridge Hotel in Nechuka, mates Ern Alcock and Horry Wheeler began working on their dream, and three years later the Winton Motor Company was born. Our founders knew Australians needed a rugged car for tough local conditions, with no-nonsense performance and breakthrough design. Their first production model, the 15, known to Winton enthusiasts the world over as the Mongo, was an unstoppable 15-cylinder force of nature, which set the benchmark for the Wanderers, Wildcats and Turbos that have followed in its illustrious wheel tracks. As Prime Minister Billy Hughes, standing next to the first Mongo, uttered those famous words, She's a Ute, Australians knew they had a winner on their hands. And 101 years later, Winton remains at the frontier of progress and performance, with the groundbreaking 2018 Winton Turbo exported to more than 100 countries. We think Ern and Horry would approve. The Winton Motor Company. Go, Australia! Okay. Uh, Look, Frosty, the thing I noticed is that at next weekend's Supercars Round in Newcastle, uh, there's going to be a demo run uh, of the S5000, which is CAMS' new big open wheel category, V8 in the back, harking back to the 70s, um, late 60s through the 70s of Formula 5000. Big, big V8 open wheel. American wheelers. engine in the back of it, but a, a really spectacular Formula 1 car. There were two getting around for a while. Uh, there was one called the Formula Thunder 5000, which was produced by a former racer called Chris Lambden. And then CAMS came out of the clouds with theirs called Super 5000. And um, that was the supercars, actually, that, that launched that one. Well, the two groups united in July last year to create S5000. And that's about to be shaken up by the Frosty 5000. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah? So when, Look out. when Mark, Win- <laughs> Mark Winterbottom, you know, quite appropriately ah, gets ah, the wheel ah, of the Frosty 5000. The um, puzzle falls into place. So it's going to have the Winton red back bolted into the back of it. That's the two-stroke V9 right. uh, turbo. Is I know that much. Green power. Oh, it's all green. It's okay. all two stroke. Two stroke. No is, one can make really two stroke green. as environmentally friendly as Winton. <laughs> um, and the first engineering drawings uh, have broken cover. We'll, you can see that on screen for people on YouTube. It's all Frosty's work. Did it's, Edgar Berry fa- do those? It's fantastic. Uh, anyway, something to look forward to. That, that's really going to shake up the open wheel thing. <laughs> Talking of something to look forward to, Matt. Yes. Um, you've been all over the fact that there's a, a new movie heading for us. Strong car theme. Mm-hmm. Fill us in. Yes, so coming up in mid-December, there is a new Transformers movie. Uh, but this is not like the other Transformers movies that have come before. It's kind of... Uh, I feel like the way uh, Hollywood film landscape is at the moment, you sort of like, it's, is it a reboot? Is it a prequel? Is it a soft reboot? Is it a hard reboot? Is it yeah. a cinematic universe? Is it a control or- delete Yeah, well... <laughs> That's an <laughs> IT joke. There, yeah, no, but there are some film studios that have totally gone for the control alt delete oh, yes, task okay. manager end task. I mean, I suppose <laughs> it opens up the broader concept of Hollywood always having been fairly conservative, hasn't it? You know, if they mm. if they sense that they're on a bankable mm. uh, prospect, they'll milk it. They'll slowly. go for it. Oh well, like I, all you have to do is think about you know. Ten, so ten years ago, it was threequels. You remember in two thousand and eight, we had Shrek the Third, Pirates of the Caribbean three, right? Um, Oh, there was another big one. Spider-Man 3, okay. which was no 2007. But um, anyway. Yeah. What movie um, are we talking about, Matt? I we're talking about Bumblebee. Yet. Uh-huh. Right. Bumblebee, the, uh, the kind of prequel to all the other um, Transformers movies that have come before. There's been kind of a bit of a, a creative shift. Michael Bay is not directing this one. Uh, it's being directed by Travis Knight, who worked for uh, an animation production company called Leica. Uh, and they did some, like... I love their movies. Great. Um, great. Yeah, and so this one... How's Laika spelt? Uh, L-A-I-K-A. Okay. Um, Unlike the, uh, the camera brand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or the... I think it was a, a dog that got sent into space. So the, the thing that <laughs> I find a bit confusing is that this character, Bumblebee, I'm, yes. I'm absolutely not a Transformers expert on anything but... Sure. But 
to me, it says it was a Camaro. That was in the the original film. Original so film. Uh, the two thousand, well, not the original film, the two thousand and seven film. And, and how far back as a thing mm. do the Transformers go? Is that something that existed in the fifties, or was it more seventies, mm. eighties? When did well, it emerge? Do you know? It depends because there are a whole variety of okay. places. The Transformers, as we know them, were the nineteen eighties, but they were actually based off uh, a, a toy that came from Japan of yep. um, you know vehicles that would transform into ah. robots. So was it a manga comic or something like that? In Japan? No, they just kind of existed as these robot toys, uh, right and then it wasn't until they started to um, sort of export it to other markets that there was this idea of. No, they need to do something, which is when they came up with the idea of, oh, there's the Autobots and the Decepticons and they, they right. fight each other, which right. then, you know, one of the huge staples of a lot of those, you know, kids shows, like toy-based kids shows from the 80s. And so it was a cartoon before it was a movie. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so for the 2007 movie, because it was um, sponsored, sponsored, I think, by GM, right uh, a lot of the cars in them were, a lot of the characters were redesigned to fit whatever GM was promoting. So in the um, cartoon and original uh, animated movie, Bumblebee was a... Volkswagen Beetle. Yep. And he is now oh, a Volkswagen I Beetle I in this one. Right. Mm. So it's... Whereas in the live action film, Bumblebee would, was a... Uh, Chimera. Yep. Yeah. And so he's, they've taken it kind of back to the character's sort of roots, I guess. Yep. Um, and so he's, he's this, he's got a lot of character. Uh, now, which I'm I'm really excited about because I actually I quite liked the Camaro Bumblebee, but at the start of the 2007 movie, he's sort of like an older 1970s Camaro, kind of a bit busted. Second up. gen. It didn't make sense to me how <laughs> here's Bumblebee, second gen Camaro, mm-hmm. not a Beetle. Yeah, but I think bumped into a Beetle at some point. Weirdly, as a yeah, as like a went into a tunnel, <laughs> came out a. Uh, the Camaro concept, not the production car. Yep. Anyway. Ugh. And that the concept, as cool as it was, just kind of didn't have the same sense of character, I think, that the older one did. Yeah, right. And so while it was a, a much clean. nicer... Yeah, yeah. And it did just sort of... You went from going, oh, cool, this feels like... A, this car feels like a character. And because these movies are all... Uh, they always get described as being first car stories. Right. Um, and so it kind of loses some of that when it's kind of turning into a GM ad, I think. Yeah, is that sure. first car stories as in cars you can imagine owning as your first car or first cars as in first person? Um, uh, no, first car that you would own. Okay, so that, cool. that kind of connection so that you have with I'd, your first identif- car. You can identify with it. Yeah, so in my yeah. case, my Transformer would be a 1996 Volkswagen, not Volkswagen, um, Ford Laser named Great. Lucy. Wow. Now, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> you, are, you are a grown man. I am. Um <laughs> Is this Physical. movie pitched at children, adults, both? Where is it? Where's its sweet spot? Who's both. It trying, both. both. Okay. It's definitely looking a lot more kid friendly than some of the other ones, uh, and it, it's got kind of like an ET vibe sort of oh, to okay. it, or an Iron Giant kind of thing, okay. where, uh, about you know like a kid and their alien. Yeah, right. But it's also there's the nostalgia angle for the people who were kids with the original Cartoon. Transformer series, yeah. um, and it's it's looking like it's kind of earnest enough. That I think it's it's something that you you know you could see as a the family. parents won't fall asleep. I don't think so. No. No. Yeah. Is surely Volkswagen must be involved in some way. Otherwise, you know, they're getting a hell of a plug. Yeah, I don't actually know for sure. I imagine they'd have to be. There are no other Volkswagens that have been featured in the trailers that I've seen. Yeah. Um, but because I think. The Beetle, the new Beetle, new, yeah. new, new Beetle is finished oh, now. Gone. So yeah. there's, no, there's no connection there. Yeah. No, sin, no idea of a, a new one on the horizon as right. far as I'm aware yeah. of. And so is this a, an absolute blockbuster in prospect or is it just going to be another kind of Transformers film? Is this a big deal? Um, Honestly, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, and time will tell. I ima- Look, I imagine it's going to make money. Yep. Uh, quite a bit of money. Do we yeah. know of any stars aside from the Beatle? Uh, Hayley Steinfeld. Uh, she was in the True Grit remake a few years ago mm. um, and she's been in a Mrs. bunch of Steinfeld's stuff Steinfeld's little girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Jerry, also, Jerry yeah. Steinfeld's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it also stars um, uh, oh, I, I'm really going to want to shout it when I say it but I can't because I'll blow the mic out. John Cena. Oh, uh, I see. <laughs> he's yeah. sort of the government agent he doesn't need any special effects at all. He and can no, just walk on his... No, he's... He's, he's a robot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is he going to be a actually, Transformer? He's actually very charismatic. Is he? Like, he's good been at, in a bunch you of You think stuff. he's a decent actor? Yeah, well, I think he's got a certain, like, charm to him when he's on screen. Well, he's, he's totally in show business, isn't he? He's in the kind of professional wrestling thing. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's in the wrestling, and he's been in a bunch of movies lately. Um, yeah, look out, The Rock. 
Dwayne. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's <laughs> someone who's made that crossover very successfully. Mm, yeah. yeah, another in- Not incredibly since charming. Hulk Hogan. Well. So with um, there's the Beetle. Any clues on other kind of automotive content, other cars that might make a cameo? or We've caught bits of Optimus Prime, but he, I think, is going to be mostly off it for a bit. And so he's in yeah. his original kind of is Mack he a truck, truck? form. Like, he's at Mack no, no, truck. Peterbilt. No, Peterbilt. He was a Peterbilt Peter originally. Yeah. Yeah. But so in the cartoon, he was a cab over, whereas in the live-action movies, oh. he was a... Mal, you're obviously yes. on your game. Whatever you're the engine you've beaten truck me. is. What? I've played myself. Made a fool of myself <laughs> in my own house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I laughed too loud. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's okay. We can, we can fix it in post. <laughs> um, uh, there have been a few other um, vehicles that have popped up, but it's the starring role is definitely... So the, the focus of the movie is Bumblebee? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and the main right. villains of the Decepticons are all kind of in jet form. As I wow. understand it, okay, sounds like fun. Yeah, so you can watch a fighter so jet probably an with a all air cooled movie, right? Yeah, as in jets, yeah, as well. I was assuming there. I think I saw that really on the poster. Actually, to take on the whole film anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyway, an just trying to take movie. what I can from it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on. Yes. Thank you for that, Matt. That's we, all right. We are, of course, in a corner of the shed, and just through the door over there are some of the cars that we've been driving this week. And I want to start with you, Matt, actually. Mm. Uh, you one, one stood out for you. Yes. Partially because of the shade, and we were just talking about Bumblebee. Yeah. Uh, but partially the car itself. Tell yes. Us, tell us what it was. I drove the uh, Kia Rio GT line, um, and I really quite liked it. It yeah. was a nice place to be. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So it's a new top spec for the Rio. Okay. <laughs> that was a question. I believe it is. <laughs> oh, right. Because I had thought, because uh, I know the Rio Sport is coming out, but I don't know. I think this is above. Uh, this is above that? No. I just, look, cool honestly, sport? I typically just hear Sport and go, oh, that's the top of the... Right, <laughs> and okay. the, the the one that uh, we've been driving is in a particularly arresting yes. shade of yellow. I have described it as Tweety Bird yellow. Not yeah, Bumblebee great. yellow? Um, you know, it could also be Bumblebee yellow. Right. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Rio, Matt? Sorry. No, that's okay. Like, I I was actually surprised at how much I liked the way it looked. I've never really walked past, you know, a, yep. a, a hatch like that and gone, wow, that's a really good looking car. But I, just walking up to, to the Rio yesterday, I was thinking, yeah. wow, this is, this looks nice. Yeah, it does. Yeah. They are doing a great job of dressing up the GT line cars, like the mm. uh, the Picanto GT line looks cool. Mm. Yeah, and that's that's Kia continuing to benefit mm. from the input of senior designers that have such a wonderful mm. uh, kind of portfolio yep. um, under Peter Schreyer, the people that he's hired to come into the Kia design team. They're doing a fabulous job. They've mm. taken Kia from Nowheresville to very much the leading edge um, in terms of auto mm. design. Yeah. That's great. I did find, um, it was nice to drive. I did find that there were a few times in Sydney traffic, and I don't know if I've got the term right, but is it turbo lag where you sure. put the your foot down and it kind of takes a minute to go vroom. Sure. Yeah, yeah cool. <laughs> uh, it's pretty commonplace these days, but it's generally uh, in the interest of conserving fuel. Uh, yeah, it's not sure. always the turbo at fault. It's often auto calibration, throttle calibration, yeah. etc. cetera. Okay. But, yeah. but it's also known like as vroom like delay. It. It's it's a vroom delay, vroom delay as well as turbo lag. Yeah, delay. good. All right, cool. Well, to Sounds just like coin a... Matt's phrase, yeah. you know, it takes a while to go vroom. vroom. It's vroom <laughs> delay. <laughs> Instead of region which, in, in some France. heavy Sydney traffic, could be very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and the the, the cabin was nice and comfortable. Um, yeah, plenty of room on the back seat in the Rio. Yeah, yeah, for a little hatchback, it mm. was a very spacious cabin. Mm. Um, right. Do you know? Uh, does the back seat move? Some of those uh, don't smaller think it hatches, does. I think I think it's just. You know, the, the new generation of bigger I'm, light hatchbacks. For its mm. worth, I really like that idea in Me a smaller too. car. You can mm. just make a play between more, you know, load space yep. and more rear legroom. Seems incredibly sensible to me. It's very yeah. costly for the manufacturers to build it into the car, right, right. the extra mechanism. Mm. But, you know, of my first generation, uh, actually only generation Toyota Echo has a sliding back seat. And yes. people up to six foot two can sit in the back. No Absolutely. Worries Plenty does, of headroom, legroom. Our yeah. daughter's Yaris has it right. as well. So yep. it's great. It's a good, good feature. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, Korean cars that look good, drive well. Mal, you've been steering one. Fill us in on that. So I revisited the i30N uh, over the last weekend, which is always welcome. Uh, I drove it shortly after the launch before. Uh, drove my other half to hospital to have a baby in it. Picked up our baby from hospital she in it. She had the baby in the car? No. Or she waited no. until she got to hospital? No. <laughs> okay. It got us there in the nick of time. Fabulous. But uh, great for the baby seat. No worries at all. But okay. <laughs> 
beyond all that, that's a pretty cracking drive. Anyway, revisiting it six months later, it's a. I think it's a real in the know car. Those in the know, the the interior is pretty drab by mm. hot hatch standards. The exterior isn't particularly loud or exciting, um, but mm. the the fundamental engineering within it that's taken it beyond the regular R thirty hatch and converted into a you know a decent performance car. Right, I think it's great. It's so cheap. And mm. aside from just its own performance as a product. It's another indication, isn't it, of how far Korean manufacturers are going and have come Definitely. in terms mm. of the product that they're producing yeah. and, and the way people perceive the brands. Yeah, so, I, you know, Matt yeah. sees a Kia, um, a little Rio, goes, yeah, cool-looking car, drives really nicely. Then there's the i30N, a genuine kind yeah. of hot hatch. Mm. They're stepping into territory that they haven't been in before and with, with total credibility. Yep. Um, whereas if you rewound 15 years... 10 years even. Yep. No chance. Yeah, anyone who, you know, sort of thinks, mm, Koreans, can you trust them? Just needs to forget about it. Yeah. Really. I can't... Yeah, that, that, you know, now that, that ship has sailed. Moving the, beyond the, 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 uh, sure. the not-so-great Korean Holdens, uh, the remaining products on our shores, uh, even the upcoming Sangyongs seem to be pretty good. Right. Uh, you know, as, a, as an alternative choice in the ute segment. Yeah. And SUV. Mm. Um, but uh, certainly the Kia and Hyundais and got this i30N. Wow. Out yeah, of here. Yeah, good. <laughs> you know, what's a, a, a difficult to convince demographic hot hatch buyers? Uh, <laughs> so the, the burning question, of course, is Golf GTI, i30N, where would you be leaning? You know, the, the, the Golf has such a tremendous reputation. I don't think it's not really apples and apples just yet because you right. can still only get a manual in the i30N. But okay. uh, as a manual uh, preferer, I'd probably go the i30. You does, would, really. Does but the i30 yeah. also have the crazy massive warranty as well? Five year, yeah. which is pretty Five pretty standard these days, actually. Okay. It's yeah. only Kia with the seven year. Kia's got the seven, the seven The seven year, I'm still kind of wrapping my head around. It's so amazing that. in that you can own that car. Say you've got a standard lease, mm. and that might be three years. That car's sold on with mm. four years' worth of warranty on it, uh, which is That's you know wild. longer than some other brands. Which is like a Toyota, for example, is three Toyota. years. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Where were we? Anyway, we're You'd moving have the i30N. That. i30N. I30N. You'd have a yeah, no, it's, <laughs> yeah. A, it's a great drive. and <laughs> We're in the shed, Mel. Okay, we're bound to see it at plenty <laughs> of tracks. <laughs> we, we were just I talking think. about Transformers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we've moved on from Transformers. Oh, okay, very good. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, the car I've been driving is a Mercedes-AMG C43. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And it's a wonderful middle ground between a premium C-class coupe Uh, And a full-blown C63S, which is the, you know, the fire and brimstone, V8, uh, all of that. So if you want something in the middle, this is just such, I think, a superb package. It's really a lovely car to drive. It's quite discreet to look at. It's it's really just the AMG pack that you get on the lesser ones. Yeah. But with the V6 twin turbo. It's not shouty. uh, However, it's quite distinctive, mm. and to drive it, it's so beautifully smooth. It's a uh, it's an uh, V6 mm. as opposed to the V8. Now it's more than 110 grand. We're talking about uh, decent money here, mm. but it's not in the same league. I think you're looking at another 50 or so yep. um, to get up to a mm. C63. Yep. Uh, so in terms of value, and it's beautifully equipped, lovely the the way it's made and still really, quick, it's and it's still a fast zero to 104.5. It's a sub like five that. second car, zero to 100, yeah. which is mm. seriously quick. So. It makes a lot of sense. How often are you going to use all of that all C63 wheel drive as well? Performance, you know, that you don't get in the C63. Exactly. Mm. So good for the snow that and car. It, dirt roads. The seats are fantastic. They're sculpted, racy, very yeah. racy buckets. The steering mm. wheels and Alcantara trim. It feels fantastic just to sit in it's it. It's nine tenths of a C63 interior. Yeah, yeah, so it's you, great. You feel like you're in a special place. Okay. And I find it's just. When you're dawdling around town, it's still a very comfortable Mercedes. And you can press that button that makes the exhaust go... And it turns into fun. A, love that. Then yeah. it's an AMG. The annoy your neighbours yeah. button. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and you can turn it off if you get on well with it. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. <laughs> show off as you drive past the fresco <laughs> dining venues. Yeah. Button. Now, Can't fit that on a button, though. One person you'd be a bit concerned about um, if they moved in next door would be our dear leader, Elon. So... Oh, boy. It's time for Musquatch. Okay. Um, we nailed that turn, by the way. <laughs> Muskwatch. <laughs> it's yep. Muskwatch TV. A few weeks I'll ago, turn. we checked in Thanks. on the fact that uh, the deer leader had been um, marketing or, or pre-promoting Tesla Keeler. 
Okay, so <laughs> he's going off into the whole tequila uh, mm-hmm. market. So submarines, flamethrowers, rockets, rockets, electric cars, some cars, tunnels. Now tequila. Tunnels. So, so Tesla Tequila. So Elon filed to trademark that name last month. Mm-hmm. And he actually tweeted a mock-up of the bottle. And it looks mm-hmm. kind of cool. There'll be a picture um, on screen for people watching on YouTube. Now, the CRT, which is the El Consejo Regulador de Tequila, um, del tequila, is opposing the request as it evokes the word tequila. And tequila is a protected word in the <gasps> like same champagne. way as champagne. Huh. Ah. Right, so he can't, well, according to them, he's going to struggle to use anything that sounds like tequila. So Tesla Killer, I think they should just, it's rocket fuel, right? So they should just brand it SpaceX and be oh, done with yeah. it. Like some kind of SpaceX rocket fuel. <laughs> I would buy that. I would absolutely buy that. Um, anyway. No, fair. Fair. <laughs> yeah. um, wow, where to from here? Oh, look, here's mine. Personal watercraft? Oh, no, we've done that with submarines. It's almost like... Um, <laughs> yeah, don't, it's almost don't, like don't a, mention the personal watercraft. <laughs> like a kitten when you've got a piece of string and it's just, oh, I like that. And, oh, yeah. no, I'm over here. Yeah. Whatever yeah. seems to capture um, Elon Musk's attention, he's he's into it in 100% and then just moves on to something else. His and personal branding is the eccentric millionaire. Is, yeah, is, he's uh, doing yeah. a very good job. He plays that. that part beautifully. He absolutely does. <laughs> Anyhow, when it comes down to tin tax and producing actual Tesla cars motor cars um, the model 3 is the big deal because mm-hmm. that's the one that's going to take them into the mainstream and they need mainstream the mainstream they need to get that number up <laughs> he's in there. the meme stream i know that <laughs> he is that's Ooh. true <laughs> hey. um so for the 12th week in a row model 3 production according to the bloomberg tracker that we look at is under 5000 so this is this magic number where they have to get above that and shoot on to 6000 it was at 4472 that's down 238 cars on uh, on last week so I, that's a quarter. That's three months where they haven't hit this 5,000 mark. So mm. they've got to get there. They've got to get there or the investors will start to get well nervous again. In my view. Yep. Anyway. We're approaching Christmas. And that means... Mm. I don't know. Maybe he's got a surprise for us. <laughs> it's Christmas morning. <laughs> Santa Claus is going to bring some Elon's surprise Elon's going to rock up Elon. in his sleigh. Okay. Slide down the chimney. <laughs> be an electric sleigh. With that, we've reached the finish line. Right. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, James. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. And thanks to our producer, Georgia. Look, as an outsider, Georgia, what do you make of the human race? Um, anyway, and thanks to <laughs> thanks to Rotu Shu on YouTube commenting on Matty Campbell's iPhone video experiment uh, for our latest Ranger versus Amarok Comparo. He said, just like the podcast, this video is rough and ready, but somehow quite entertaining. Uh, I think that's rather nice. And Adolf Adolfovich gave us a film camera emoji, four thumb up emojis, four hand clapping emojis, and a smiley face emoji. I've never seen Mark Pomeranz right. give such praise. That was so that's great. <laughs> thank well, you. Thank you, Adolf. Thank you very much. And so get in touch just like these people have. Search for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram and use the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. You can listen to and watch us on YouTube. And if you're an iTunes devotee, please rate and review us. I hope you can join us next time. Until then, what's the difference between a Ferrari and a defenceless and dying hostage held against their will in a viciously spiked cage? I don't have a Ferrari in my garage. Okay, see you next time. (laughs) 